Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie for those who don't know me and I am back home, okay? Am I a little behind in the reviews? Yes, just a little bit, but after tomorrow we will be back on track. Tomorrow will be nine and 10 and then I'll try to do the daily reviews, okay? So before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. Okay, so we are going to start with the dinner. How the couples were coming in was very telling on where they stand. PJ and Jess are first and they walk in looking awkward, followed by Adrian and Thomas, April and George, Shanita and Jordan, Richie and Laura, who George is excited to see because he is ready to spill the tea. And she kissed a girl in the hot tub. She was. Kissed another girl in the hot tub. I could have ripped the ring off my finger right then. She kissed a girl. Yeah. Um, she kissed a girl in the hot tub. Now, before they actually got to the dinner portion or whatever, no, even this event, George had told April, or maybe just the cameras, I don't quite remember, that he was not gonna bring up their marital issues because some things were meant to just stay private. So if you ask me, in the same way that he perceived him, her, pecking another girl as a betrayal, this also falls in line with it being a betrayal. Whitney and Duga are next to come in looking very distant, of course. And one thing about Whitney, she will let you know when she's not impressed. Oh, you could drive a truck between Duka and Whitney. Whitney, how was your wedding day? Um, it happened. Right. Right, it happened. Now here's a little tea on Duka, okay? A lot of us have been giving PJ some flack for being a stripper, however, did you know that so was Duca? I don't know if you knew, but I didn't know. Okay, apparently he is a UK pleasure boy or pleasure boy UK, whatever. Full frontal and everything, y'all. He goes by Apollo. Apollo. And he's a stripper too. So maybe Whitney is right when she says this man is a showman because he's showing all his manhood. Keisha and Kwame are next, walking in looking like a power couple, but it quickly, quickly goes to the pits when Kwame shades Keisha for what reason? Who knows? Babe, you ain't got a glass? No. Oh! Is that how gentlemanly you are? Go and take it. A beer is unbecoming. You can have it. You should have just given it to me. My husband decided to feed himself before he fed me. Yep. Deal with it. Deal with it. I'd mentioned this before, that Kwame's machismo might be a little bit too much, and it is showing here that like, he wants to be this alpha male, but he neglects Keisha. And maybe you're not attracted to her, maybe this isn't your typical type, but at least have some kind of tenderness, some kind of warmth, and he, mm -mm, he ain't got that. So Zoe is last to come in. She comes in on her own because Jenna has Corona. So she was unable to attend, but we move over to the dinner portion of the dinner. Yes. Um, and off the bat, Duke was like, I'm going to give a speech. And guess who does not like that idea? Whitney. I'm sure that we have all had our trials and tribulations, but moving forwards, I'd like to raise our glasses to love, but most importantly, to have fun. Lovely, Duca. Oh, Whitney. It's fake. I can't do it. I can't make oh, fake this. You know, the more I watch Duca, I can see her irritation with him. Like, if you're going to be this peppy guy, I hope that it's natural and I hope that this is you throughout, whether there are cameras on, whether there are people around or not. But it seems like that's not the case. I can't fully be on Whitney's side though because she had an attitude when she met the other brides slash one groom. So it's clear she was never going to come in with the purest of intentions. She was never going to come in um, being open-minded to the situation. She was going to find issues with anybody she was partnered with. She is kind of right though when it comes to this specific partner. Kwame is talking to uh, somebody else in the experiment and he's kind of beating around the bush when it comes to his attraction to his wife and where they are intimacy wise. But Keisha, she's like, listen, it's not there. There was a jacuzzi, there was alcohol. The room was just, everything was just set up for everything. Heaven. Bro. You had sun, sea, beach, uh, 
Did it, it get spicy? It was amazing. Oh, talk to me nicely. But there's no intimacy or anything like that. Why is he not grabbing you? And... Intimacy is really important for her, and what's really clear is that she's not used to being in a relationship where a guy isn't making those moves. I feel like if you are in the perfect environment, no phones, no work. I mean, maybe they had phones, I don't know. But you're, you're cut off from the daily distractions that would typically take you away from connecting with somebody. You're in a tropical environment, if that's what you like. You're with this beautiful person. There's even liquor involved. I mean, come on. If y'all can't connect under those circumstances, maybe it's it's just not gonna work, okay? Clearly, it's an attraction thing with Kwame, which he doesn't wanna outright say, but he basically says it when he's questioned about his type and he names people who look nothing like Keisha. What do you normally go for? Is she like your type or you normally go for? So like Rihanna, so Beyonce, yeah. for the typical. So basically, I'm not being funny with her hair. Oh, Whitney? Mm, sort of. Honestly, I was here for the shade from April. So Whitney, so somebody like Whitney because they don't look nothing to like besides skin tone. Speaking of April, the rumor mill has been working overtime, okay? And news of her little secret rendezvous, which was supposed to be a secret, but George does not know how to keep one, has made its way to her. Yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't need to tell him. Well, George. It was a fun game. Have you and never played truth or dab? Are you asking me what? No, I feel like I mean George. You get to play it. Somebody ever heard it and decided to gossip about it. Not happy now. Oh, this is a shit show. I thought they were all playing truth or dare. George stepped away, she kissed a girl, he came back and was offended. Now it sounds like it was just her playing truth or dare in his absence. So I could, I could, I could, I could, see, I could see where things went wrong. Absolutely, I could see where things went wrong. But George kind of, I still think he he plays it up to be honest because he uses the word intimacy like he was she was intimate with somebody everybody knows that insinuates sex everybody knows that so I'm like come on and then too he says one thing to other people being very frustrated about the situation but then to her he's like oh no it's fine like we buried the hatchet like it's no problem da 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 you're lying now you're being now you're being duplicitous and April can't really act accordingly because you're not telling her the full truth April herself though keeps diminishing the act and it's like if there's a relationship violation which isn't always cheating. I learned that term recently. Somebody said it's better to name things as relationship violations because what might be cheating to you might not be cheating to somebody else. But in the parameters of what we have together, you violated our agreement, right? She violated him. He's hurt by it. She needs to accept that for what it is instead of diminishing her transgression to make herself feel and look better. Right? And I, I'm seeing that like that's a theme between the two of them. Cause even George, he was like, oh, <laughs> I just told it to one person and then they overheard and now it's spreading like waffle. You literally told everyone. We're gonna move on to the commitment ceremony. Shanita and Jordan are first. And I mean, ah, it's happy days between these two. I, there's no point even putting a clip, you guys. Like they are just so perfect. They both decided to stay. I hope the other shoe doesn't drop, but it's, it's likely. Next up is PJ and Jess, who are struggling to come out of the friend zone. I came into this really with high expectations. I felt like I wanted someone on the same level as me, someone you know that like lip has their own house and things like that. I haven't seen any physical support at all. That's just how I am. I'm just saying. Well, I just feel like you're just attacking me because I did. Like I, I, I am here for PJ. I mean, you're making me come across like a bitch. I understand what she's saying in wanting somebody who was just as established, if not more, than she was. However, when it comes to the actual like emotional connection, physical affection, all that kind of stuff, she's given nothing. And so it's it's kind of PJ putting in, putting in, putting in. But also with PJ, I feel like it's more of like a let me prove to you rather than let me just show you who I am. And I want him to just be authentic. Strip the layers back, just be who you are. Be who you are, sorry. Um, instead of trying to prove something to her, just show her who you are. And if she still doesn't, doesn't accept you, then it is what it is. But also with Jess, she doesn't give us anything. Like even um, the one expert called her out and she felt like it was an attack. And most times when you feel attacked, it's because you know they're hitting a soft spot that is true. So Jess, 
you can say all that you want, but you haven't given this relationship a proper try either. Regardless, they both decided to stay. Jenna has recovered from her corona and she and Zoe are still kind of struggling with the veganism topic, but also Zoe has an issue with PDA. I love eating meat, <laughs> so really. I love steak, I love going to Nando's. I just feel like there's so many other more important things like to a relationship than someone's diet. Have you been intimate? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. No shame in that, Shanita. No, there's no shame in that. No shame. Yeah. You are affectionate, but yeah. it just depends on the environment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even though they aren't overly affectionate, I can feel it between them. And I think that's okay. In most cases, I think couples who are full on either truly are really that passionate with each other normally, it's like a puppy love situation, or it's an overcompensation for the issues that they have going on. So I don't really care for people who do a lot of PDA because you can still see the love and affection, love, mm, you know what I mean. You can still see that they have a connection that they are nurturing, that's good enough. And they both decided to stay. Keisha and Kwame clearly both fell short on each other's list of physical preferences which is what has led to the lack of affection between them. I was attracted to his beard. I thought, okay, Keisha's a little bit different to the type that I usually go for. He said that he gets bored really quickly. What? We had an amazing time. But the signal that you were getting is but that he's, he's, that he's not available. was like, Kay, just have a good time. Just have a good time, wow. I think your whole vibe, you're an attractive woman. Kwame, your whole vibe. If these two say, Vibe, one more time, vibe. What? I use the word too, I, I have fallen victim to the word vibe, but what is vibe? What is vibe? That's why y'all are stuck in the friend zone. You can't actually articulate what it is that you like and appreciate about each other and neither are you showing those attributes to the other person so that they can be like, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't really like that. It's just, oh, she's a great vibe. He's a great vibe. Y'all gonna be vibing forever. Like you're you're never gonna be affectionate if it's just a vibe. They stayed though. April and George are an interesting couple because they present like the perfect couple. They look great, they look like things are perfect, but there's these underlying feelings that they acknowledge within themselves but don't want to express outwardly. You are into each other. I think the body language yeah. speaks mm -hmm. volumes here. Regarding the hot tub, the I problem, don't even know was, why it was a. It was an it issue was a because thing. I walked away. So keen away. to hear it George's would, perspective, then we'll come yeah, to you. Yeah, okay. It wasn't even a kiss. It was like, like that. If I thought if it was a thing, I would have not have told George. I wouldn't have done it. Do you think that was a boundary cross? At that point, we didn't. I didn't. We don't know what each other's boundaries are because we there don't really go. know each other. But now I know. Truly, when you think about it, this did not have to be the issue that it was. She could have said, listen, I didn't realize this would have been a thing for you. I thought it was amusing. Um, I was just having fun. And most guys think it's hot for two girls to kiss each other. You are not that guy and I apologize. Even him, he could have said, I understand that I didn't articulate my boundaries clearly. I also understand that you were having a bit of fun and you didn't mean to actually disrespect me. I blew it out of proportion. I apologize. Happy days. The fact that we are still talking about this it's just, come on. And to learn that it was just a... <sighs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. They both chose to stay. Richie, I felt bad for Richie, but he was such a good sport, you know? He was caught off guard by Laura's admission that she has to parent Richie in this relationship. He's starting here. I'm starting here, right? There's a long way for him to go. I kind of wanted someone who'd been around the block a few times, kind of had some bruises. It's more of a project than I had anticipated. Sometimes you have to change if you want something special. And I tell you what, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Like I said in the last, I think it was the last one, I actually think it's endearing to be partnered with somebody who's adamant on making this their greatest love story. Like. Regardless of the history he has, yes, I understand it's a little bit daunting being married multiple times, which I'm sorry, is not an achievement. It's not, it's just, it's not. But to have somebody who's like, I'm going to put my best foot forward, I'm gonna try my absolute hardest to make sure that this is a forever thing, I think that's sweet, I think that's great. I wish Laura appreciated it more, but they did make a breakthrough in this conversation. He took it on the chin, he wasn't offended. 
she's gonna give him a try, he's gonna give her a try, and they both decided to stay. Adrian and Thomas are asked about their issues, and the interesting dynamic between these two is that they've already hashed it out between them, so this is kind of like a retelling for now, because then there was a little bit of discourse, which I was confused by, but I thought it was great that they had already done what the experts were gonna do anyways. Thomas likes to perform. In life, I don't mean on stage. Every day, I mean in walking life. down the streets. In life. The bigger Thomas got, the smaller Adrian got, the louder mm. Thomas got, the quieter Adrian got. As much as I still don't see the compatibility between these two, I appreciate that they are one of the most authentic couples. They have a feeling, express it, maybe bump heads, which is not a problem. I think too many people out here want perfection in relationships, but conflict, and the resolution of conflict nurtures relationships, truly. You learn a lot about what frustrates somebody, how they deal with conflict, how forgiveness works between, like you learn so much in conflict, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I'm glad that they are open to conflict, open to communication, and open to resolution. They both decided to stay. Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Oh, Whitney released the clip on Duca, and I can't lie to you guys, I'm kind of on her side. What's the issue? Whitney's not dropping her guard down. There's so many walls up. You are masterful at sabotaging relationships. You're a pro at it. She talks every day about fame. When the experiment's done, I'm gonna get so much pussy. I'm gonna get all these girls in my DMs. That, that is such There's, a crash. That's the reality of it. Thank so you. you want me to be here and be genuine in a relationship with someone who's here for fame. Like, what do you want from me? Where is the CCTV footage? Married at first sight, I don't like it, but at least they got that, that security camera in those apartments because Duga, Duga, oh, y'all. I did not expect those to be the comments that he was saying that she was put off by. So I can understand why she wouldn't want to be vulnerable with somebody who's already looking for a way out. But she was also looking for a way out from day dot. So they're both, they're both not being vulnerable with each other. They're both looking for an exit. Whitney literally found one and she up and left. And so when she's having her little frustrated tantrum situation, Adrian is trying to vouch for her saying, listen, we're not in that relationship. We don't understand what she's going through. And Thomas, for some reason, was offended. Because you don't understand, because you went there. Why can we not give her a benefit of the doubt We are, but she's not talking. Minute. Your opinion's well and truly fucking is by the whole room. He needs a moment now because no one's been looking at him for 10 minutes. Oh, God. <sighs> I mean, butting heads is something that they already do. So I guess this is normal. But yeah, that, hmm. Something else is going on in this relationship that we're not privy to seeing quite yet. But back to Whitney and Duca. She obviously wrote that she wanted to leave. He wrote that he wanted to stay. So they're going to have to stay. It is what it is. I, excuse me, I think that Whitney has potential to love somebody. She's just experienced a lot of hurt and loss. She's lost people very close to her. And so she's afraid. And she admitted it. She's afraid that if she gives herself fully to somebody, they might not come back the same way that she lost her mother. But girl, living in fear, you're never gonna experience true love, to be honest. So you gotta drop it. Maybe not for Duca, but for somebody, at least. That's all I have for you guys. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.